everyone, Holly here with Becker School Supplies. Welcome to our very first Kitchen Science webinar. Together, we're gonna make new discoveries. Are you ready? Great. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. So close your eyes and think about a scientist. What does your scientist look like? What are they doing? Where are they? Okay, open your eyes. So some of you may have imagined a scientist in a laboratory and maybe they had fancy equipment like beakers and test tubes with bubbling liquids inside of them. And maybe your scientist was wearing a spiffy white lab coat. Now, I wanna tell you that you don't need any of that stuff to make scientific discoveries. You can learn using things you might find in your house. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna learn more about bubbles. Oof. I love bubbles. But before we make bubbles ourselves, I want to share with you a story about a little boy who loves to pop bubbles. So this story is called Pop, written by Jason Carter Eaton, illustrated by Matt Rockefeller. Now let's look at this cover. What do you notice? You might notice there's a little boy in the center of the cover and he's holding onto a rope. What's that rope attached to? A hot air balloon. Do you think he's in the sky or on the ground? I think he's in the sky. And you may have noticed a helicopter and an airplane. And I noticed more words. And those words say every last bubble must pop. Hmm. What do you think the story is going to be about? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's start. And we see our little boy here and he's blowing bubbles. He's got a bubble wand and he's got a little container of bubble solution. Have you ever blown bubbles this way? Okay. It was a beautiful day and Dewey was all alone blowing bubbles. You don't need a friend to blow bubbles. Hmm. Do we see other kids on this page? Yeah, it looks like they're playing together, but Dewey's not playing with them. How do you think he feels? How would you feel if your friends were playing and you weren't playing with them? Yep, so he's just gonna blow his bubbles. And he says the best part of blowing bubbles is popping them. I think so too. But no sooner had he said that than he just missed popping the very last one. Oh no. <sighs> Let's look at this bubble. What do you notice about it? Right, you see lots of colors in it. I see blue and pink and green and yellow. It kind of looks like a rainbow. Have you ever seen rainbows in bubbles? It caught a slight breeze and he stood up so he could see where it was going. It was going up. So Dewey jumped up and down to try to reach it. But in almost no time at all, it was out of reach again. He'd need to jump higher. Hmm. How do you think he can jump higher? The backyard trampoline would do the trick. Almost. This was one elusive bubble. What do you think the word elusive means? It means it's hard to catch. Do you think this bubble's elusive? Me too. Thinking quickly, he climbed up on top of his jungle gym and watched as the bubble sailed right over him. This was gonna be harder than he thought. Dewey quickly fetched a ladder and raced to the roof of his house, but the bubble was way, way past that already. Oh my, do you think you should climb on the roof of your house to catch a bubble? No way, that's totally not safe, but this is a story and our Dewey is very determined. So he grabbed his telescope. Do you know what a telescope is? It's an instrument that scientists can use to look at things that are really far away up close. Now, oftentimes you'll use telescopes to look into the sky. You can see sometimes see stars and planets. Now Dewey's using his telescope to find his bubble. So on this next page, why do you think there's that circle? Why does it look like we're looking through a circle? 
because we're seeing what Dewey's seeing as he looks through his telescope. And he sees a bubble floating away. There was a really tall building in town. Dewey hopped on his bike and rode like the wind. Where's he going? Yep, to that really tall building. So when he reached the building, he dove into the elevator and pressed the button, emerging moments later on the top floor, just moments after the bubble. <sighs> He'd need to get higher still. Just then, a man with a hot air balloon passed by. So lucky. Dewey quickly explained the situation. And of course, the man wasted no time giving Dewey his balloon. After thanking him, Dewey was off. He quickly gained on the bubble, but there must have been a crosswind because soon they were on opposite ends of the sky. Closer, thought Dewey. I have to get closer. The helicopter flying past would do nicely. And after some explaining and thanking, it was all his. So the helicopter pilot just let Dewey take her helicopter to chase this bubble. The problem with helicopters, however, is that they can only fly so high. And this bubble was showing no signs of slowing down. He definitely needed something with a little more oomph. Like that biplane, which took some serious explaining and thanking, but was totally worth it. Up, up, up went the bubble, with Dewey and his biplane quickly closing the gap, though not quick enough for his taste. His taste was more suited to that F-16 fighter jet on the horizon. Of course, it took a ton of explaining and thanking, but in the end, Dewey knew it would pay off. So now he's going to chase it in the F-16 fighter jet. Do you think he's gonna catch it? Pretty fast. The F-16 was a gorgeous aircraft and zooming through the clouds was tremendously fun. But this wasn't about fun. This was about popping that bubble. Dewey pushed down hard on the throttle and boom, soared up toward the bubble. He knew F-16s could only go up to 50,000 feet, so he needed to catch it before then. It was close but not close enough. He'd never be able to catch it now. Oh man, that bubble's so high. We can tell because it's above the clouds and the moon looks so close. He'd never be able to catch it. Not unless it happened to be the day of the moon launch, which it did. Though as Dewey did his explaining and thanking, he knew this was probably his last chance to catch that bubble. But none of that mattered now. He was in the fastest, most powerful rocket in the world. There was no stopping him. Except for the fact that the rocket stopped on the moon. Oh, what's Dewey doing? He's jumping. He's stretching. Is he going to get it? No, he missed it. Dewey returned home. He was sad that after all that effort, he'd never pop the bubble. That night, just before bed, he pulled out his telescope to see if he could spot the bubble. But something was blocking his view. Go ahead and put up your telescope again. A bubble, but not his. How do we know that's not his bubble? It's a different color. Hmm. So the bubble came in his room, and what did he do? He popped it. Then he looks through his telescope again. So look through your telescope. Now Dewey could see where that bubble had come from and where his bubble had gone. Where did his bubble go? It went all the way to another planet. And who's gonna pop his bubble? A little alien girl who was blowing her own bubbles. That's the one that floated down to Dewey. Oh my goodness. And he knew he'd found a friend. So you know, even though he was lonely at the beginning of the story, he found a really cool friend who loves bubbles just as much as he does. And then we see our little alien friend blowing her own bubbles. Did you like that story? What was your favorite part? My favorite part was probably when he rode all the way to the tall building and he jumped through the elevator and went all the way up to the top floor. It was very, very exciting when he did that. Now, are we ready to make our own bubbles? 
Great. So hopefully you've gathered some supplies before you joined our webinar today. So here you'll notice a list of supplies you'll need for our first experiment. Let's get started. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to spread your baking soda on your cookie sheet or your plate. So you'll see here on my camera that I've already done that. I've got my baking soda spread out on my plate. So while we're doing that, I want to make some observations of our baking soda. So we're going to use our senses to learn as much as we can about our uh, first ingredient in our, in our experiment here. So let's use our eyes first. What do we see? What do we notice about our baking soda? Right, I noticed that it's white and that it's made up of tiny little pieces like a powder. Now let's use our sense of touch to learn a little bit more about it. So we're gonna use the skin on our hands and we're gonna to touch our baking soda. Hmm, feels soft and it feels cold. Does yours feel soft and cold? Hmm, well now because I have baking soda on my hand here, I'm gonna smell it. Here we go. Ooh. I had some on my nose. What does it smell like? I don't think it smells like much of anything. Hmm. Well, now I'm gonna listen to it since I already have it on my hand. Here we go, I'm listening. Do you hear anything? No, I don't hear anything either. <laughs> but those are great observations of our baking soda. So now we're gonna add the next part of our experiment. We're gonna add some food coloring. Now I want you to choose one color first. Okay, I'm going to pick blue, but you can pick whatever color you want. So uh, we're going to add our food coloring to our baking soda. Now, if you cut those little sort of squeezy bottles of food coloring, growing up, some of our younger scientists might need a little bit of help with this step, okay, because it's fine motor skills and it requires a little bit of precision. So what we're going to do is we're going to add four drops of our color here. Now, we don't want to spread those four drops all over our plate and all over our cookie sheet. We want them to go in one place. We're going to do all four drops on the same place, okay? So I'm going to grab my blue. Again, you can do whatever color you want. And I'm going to add four drops. Here I go. One, two, three, four. Oop, I think a fifth one got in there. That's okay. Okay, so what happened when we added our food coloring? What did you notice? Right, you may have noticed that the drops sort of stuck together and stayed in one spot. They didn't flow all over our baking soda. You may have noticed the baking soda sucked up the uh, food coloring. And now that baking soda looks very blue or whatever color you picked. So now you're gonna do the same thing with a second color. I'm gonna pick yellow, but you can pick whatever color you'd like. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add four drops of this second color to our baking soda. We're gonna do it right next to our first color. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, what happened this time? Right, so it's kind of like the first time except with a different color. <laughs> so now we have how many drops on our baking soda? Okay, so we added four of our first color and four of our second color. How many do we have? Eight, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight drops on our baking soda. So now we're going to add another piece of our experiment, and that is vinegar. So find your vinegar, and let's make some observations. Okay, let's look at the vinegar first. What does it look like? Right, my vinegar is clear, and it doesn't have a lot of bubbles in it. Now you can feel it, feel your vinegar. Feels very wet. Mine's also a little bit cold. Is yours cold? And then smell it. Woo! Now our baking soda didn't smell like much, but our vinegar is definitely very smelly. I love the smell of vinegar. It reminds me of salads because lots of salad dressings have vinegar in them. Okay, and then like, go ahead and listen to your vinegar. Yeah, unless you slash your vinegar around, it probably doesn't make much noise, huh? <laughs> Okay, so let's make a prediction about what will happen when we add our vinegar to our baking soda. Okay, now prediction is making a guess about what you think is going to happen. So what do you think is going to happen? That's a great prediction. Now, I have a secret about science and predictions. Do you want to hear it? Okay, so the secret is 
most scientists don't mind when their predictions are wrong. It's true, because if your prediction's wrong, you can still learn a lot about your experiment. And bonus, you get to do the experiment again. So scientists don't get upset when their predictions are wrong. It just means they get to do more and learn more about what they're studying. So don't get upset if your prediction's not right. So we're gonna take our vinegar and we're gonna add it to our baking soda right between our two colors. So you can either add it with a spoon or you can use a medicine dropper or eyedropper, okay? Now, grown-ups. For some of our younger scientists, there's timing involved with using an eyedropper, okay? So you might need to work on this skill a little bit to make sure that everybody gets the hang of it. All right, so I'm gonna suck up a lot of vinegar here into my medicine dropper. And then we're gonna take a close look at what happens when we add vinegar to our baking soda. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Oh, I saw lots of things happening. I heard lots of things happening and I smell lots of things happening. Did it look like yours? Well, I saw bubbles, lots of bubbles, and they happened right away. As soon as I added the vinegar, I didn't have to wait at all for those bubbles to appear. And the bubbles sort of grew and mounted on top of each other. And at first the bubbles were blue and yellow, but then they became green. Why do you think my bubbles became green? Right, because I had blue and yellow and blue and yellow together make green. Now, did yours make green? Maybe not. If you didn't choose blue and yellow, maybe you made a completely different color. Amazing. Very good observation. Now, the question is, why did that happen? Now that happened because we just watched a really cool chemical reaction, okay? Now what happened was is the vinegar and the baking soda came together and when they did, they changed. And when they changed, they released something called carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide is what made all of those bubbles in our mixture. Pretty neat, huh? So now, I wonder what would happen if I added more food coloring, or if I added more vinegar, or what about if I used different colors? Huh, what would you like to explore? What else would you like to do with your baking soda and vinegar and food coloring? Hmm, I think I would like to try different colors. Now you can do whatever second experiment you'd like, but I'm gonna try two different colors. This time I'm going to start with pink. So I'm going to add four drops of pink to my baking soda. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then I'm going to add my yellow to it. See if it comes up with a different uh, result. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four. Hmm. I predict it's going to bubble like it did the first time. And I predict it's going to make a different color than green. Okay, because I'm starting with different colors, so I think the end color is going to be a little different. Hmm, that's my prediction. So now I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar to it. Here we go. I'm getting my vinegar. All right, let's look at it up close and see what happens. Okay, so now we got pink and yellow. See what happens. Oh, so it mostly stayed pink. Maybe there was more pink in it, but I did see some orange bubbling up in the middle there too. Now I wonder what happens if I add more vinegar. I'm gonna try it, here we go. All of them are mixing together. Now I see, actually see a little bit more in my green and blue area over there. I see a little bit more orange there. I wonder what would happen if I did it just on the uh, uncolored sections of baking soda. So I'm going to do that. Now, while you're doing your experiments, I want you talking about them with your grown-ups to see what you're seeing and hearing and smelling. Okay, so here we go. Oh, so those bubbles are just white. They don't have any of the food coloring in them. It was pretty neat. What do you think of that experiment? Yeah, and now that you have it set up, you can add more food coloring or you can add more vinegar. But before you do, I have one more experiment to show you, 
okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to gather these supplies right now. So while we're getting ready, adults, I have a very special job for you. I need you to cut the bottom off of your plastic water bottle, okay? Do it very carefully and then bring it back to us. So while our grown-ups are doing that, I want to talk a little bit about the bubbles we saw today. Let's think back to our story, Pop. Do you remember the bubble in that story? Great. And then let's think about our bubbles that we made it with our, our chemical reaction between baking soda and vinegar. Do you remember those bubbles? Okay, now I want you to think about how those bubbles are alike, how are they the same, and how they're different. Okay, so I want you to think about it for just a second. Hmm. All right, let's talk first about how they're the same. What did you notice about those bubbles that made them sort of similar? I noticed that they were both round and they were both colorful. Did you notice anything else? What about different? What did you notice about these two bubbles that was different? I mean, I noticed first that the bubble in uh, pop floated up into the sky and it floated really, really far. But our bubbles didn't float. They stayed right on top of the baking soda. So that's different. Also, how we made the bubbles was very different, right? So how did Dewey make his bubbles? Right, he, he blew into his bubble blower and the soap bubbles floated away. And we used our baking soda and vinegar to make a chemical reaction we didn't have to blow on the bubble blower at all. It just did the work for us. And we saw those carbon dioxide bubbles. Hmm, so they were a little different. Now I'd like you to have a little bit of experience with our soapy bubbles, just like our story. So we're gonna build our own bubble blower. So I want you to take that bottle, now that doesn't have a bottom on it, and you're gonna take that sock that I asked you to get. And you're gonna take the sock and you are going to wrap it around the bottom of your bottle, just like this. Now, if you find out that your sock is sort of slipping off the bottle, you can add a rubber band like I did there. Now, you're not gonna wanna wear the sock again, so choose one that has maybe lost its mate in the uh, laundry basket, okay? So you're gonna wrap it around the end. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to add the soap to the water and mix them up. That's gonna be your bubble solution. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip the sock end of your bubble blower into uh, the soap, and then you're gonna blow into this end here. Now make sure you don't suck in, okay? Grown ups, this is something I want, I need you to watch at first. Because you suck in, you're gonna get a mouthful of soap. Instead, I need you to blow out, just like you're blowing a bubble with a regular bubble wand, okay? And watch what happens. I'm not gonna do this experiment for you right now. I know, I know, but I want you to experience it the first time yourselves. I want you to make predictions and make your own observations, okay? And grownups, this might be a good one to bring outside. So as you're doing the experiment, take pictures, take video, and we would love for you to share them with us. You can share them with Becker School Supplies on either Facebook or Instagram, but really we want your family just to learn together. And I hope you'll join me next week for our next Kitchen Science webinar. And in the meantime, have fun, learn, and enjoy.